Hi there guys and girls, I just wanted to do a video about something I saw just now that I thought was really fucking disturbing. And it was this whole thing with um, United Airlines um, over in, obviously, America. Um, for those of you who didn't see it or don't know what I'm talking about, what happened was United Airlines overbooked this flight, right? And then they got on the plane and they said, oh, we've, we, we fucked up. You know, and four people have to get off because we have to send uh, some staff members um, to wherever it was going. And wherever it was going was like four hours away. I, I forgot the name of the city, right? And, it, and no one wanted to get off. No one volunteered. Um, apparently, um, this guy that this, this happened to, he volunteered at first, but then when they told him... Um, the plane that he could then get was was so much later that he would be late um, for work the next morning. He was like, nah, sorry, nah, I can't do it because I'm a doctor and I have patients. So anyway, no one wanted to get off, right? So then they, they offered these customers, they, this is why no one wanted to get off. United are like, we'll give you United dollars, you know, this, which is like, you know, some sort of currency. You can use it for a flight, but it's not real money. It's, it's United fucking money. Not, no one wants that shit, because you know what it comes with that, you know, expiry dates and terms and conditions and all sorts of bullshit. It's not the same as cold hard cash. Anyway, this guy, it wasn't about the money. He had obligations that he had to meet, meet. and so they got uh, United, got, they called the cops, and the cops dragged this guy off the fucking plane. Not only did they drag him off, they smashed his face into the armrest. Which is very clear because he, he split his lip open and there was blood fucking pouring down his face. And they dragged him out of the seat and they, they fucking knocked him unconscious and dragged him off the plane. Isn't that right? Can't the pilots drive to Can't they rent a car for the pilots and have them drive? Ah! Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. No! This is so fucked. Like, I'm not any sort of human rights activist or anything, but I hate when, like, companies and shit do things like this. They are totally in the fucking wrong. Even though United have, I, I believe, I watched a few videos, I, I believe they have some sort of contract that they can tell anyone to get off the fucking plane, which it wouldn't surprise me. It's our plane, we can do whatever the fuck we want. This guy paid for his ticket, he went, he, you know, he's made other arrangements, you know, other than dealing with the airline, you know, uh, specific dates, times, etc. You know, he's gone through the airport, he's gone through security, he's put his bags in, the, the bags are on the plane, he's put his bags in the overhead compartment, and then they come on and say, fuck you, you gotta get off. That is just fucking bullshit. And stuff like this, like I said, it really makes me mad. Like, you know, I know I haven't done a YouTube video like this for a long time, but I wanted to do a video about how fucking shit this was, man. And this, this guy, man, I hope he sues United into the fucking ground. Seriously, I hope he fucking sues. He's a doctor, so I'm hoping he's got some money. I hope he sues them, man. You know, I, I, it might be a hard case to win because of the whole, you know, United can tell you to leave the plane and he refused, so they forcibly removed him thing. But I reckon he'd still win because of, like, because of that, you know, the cops got on and fucking, you know, being dickhead cops, fucking um, smashed his face and knocked him unconscious and dragged him off the plane. The weird thing is, um, somehow he got back on the plane after they dragged him off, and he's like, he, he comes back on and he's, he's awake and he's like, I gotta get home, I gotta get home, and then, the, and then they dragged him off again, but there's no footage of them dragging him off the second time. But one guy who was on the plane said they took him off on a stretch of the second time. Then they kicked everyone off the plane anyway. Because they had to, like, do some security check because there was blood everywhere. 
from fucking forcing this guy off. So they fucked the whole thing up anyway. And you know what? This whole thing could have been avoided. United could have sent these four... Apparently they had to send four staff. You know, and that's why they were trying to get four people off the plane. They could have put those four staff in a car. It would have been a four-hour drive, and they could have got to where they were going. They could have done that, but instead they wanted to fly them there. And, uh, you know what? Fuck the passengers. Uh, they paid. You know, fuck them. We'll just kick them off the plane instead so we can send our guys to wherever the fuck they were going. Man, this, this, this made me really fucking mad. Like, really mad. And if you're watching this video and you live in the United States, don't ever use United. Fuck that airline. And I have my own little United story to tell, but I didn't want to mention that at the start of the video because I, I didn't want you to think, like, I'm doing this video because of what happened to me, you know? What happened to this guy was like, fuck. What happened to me is like nothing in comparison, but it was a real shitty experience, which I'm going to tell you now. So in 2012, we were flying, me and my cousin were flying back from Colorado to Australia. So we had flights booked, um, now I've got to think for a second because it was five years ago, uh, Colorado to LA, LA to Melbourne, right? And what happened was we, that day, we got to the, uh, the airport, the Denver airport, really early because, um, like, no one else could bring us, like, from where we were staying, Manitou Springs, to Denver Airport. Like, we only had one uh, chance to get there without paying for a taxi, which would have cost heaps, because it was a, a bit of a drive. Um, someone was able to bring us, but the condition was that they had to bring us in the morning, so we'd have to hang around the airport all day. We, me and my cousin were like, oh, all right, you know, we'll do that, whatever, you know, because it saved a lot of money, right? And so we did that. We get to the airport, we say our goodbyes and that. And then uh, we're told that uh, our flight was, uh, was it cancelled or delayed? Let me think. Uh, I think it was cancelled. Our flight was cancelled. So we couldn't get from Denver to LA to board our flight that's already booked in LA back to Melbourne. So we said, well, what are we going to do? We've got a, we got a booked you know, international flight from Los Angeles back to Melbourne. And they were like, oh, don't worry about it, because you're here early. What we'll do is we'll send you to San Francisco, and then you can get a flight from San Francisco to LA, and then make your LA flight back to Melbourne. So we're like, all right. So we did that. We flew, uh, you know, I'm going to put some pictures up. Uh, we flew from uh, Denver to San Francisco. Um, you might have remember, I mentioned that in one of my TMK in the USA log somewhere. So I, went, I, I saw the San Francisco airport, but that's all I saw of San Francisco. Um, but we get to San Francisco, right? And there's this massive line at the United counter, right? And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, um, oh, sorry. We get there and our flight from San Francisco to LA has been canceled, like just flat out canceled. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I go to go to the counter and there's this massive line, right? And we need to be in LA, like, we need to, we need to board that flight that was leaving, like, ASAP, because in, like, I don't know, an hour, two hours, whatever it was, our flight from LA was leaving back to Melbourne. Like, it was urgent that we get from uh, San Francisco back to LA. And there was this massive, humongous line that was, like, so long, I've got photos... And I'm like, I said to my cousin, I'm, I'm not fucking waiting in this line. We're going to miss our plane. So I walk all the way to the front of the line, right? And I say to the guy who's next in line at the very front, I say, look, I'm sorry like, to, to push in. I'm from Australia. We have to make a connecting flight. Do you mind if I go speak to the woman at the desk? I go, I wouldn't normally do this, but it's just a time thing. And he goes, no worries. You know, no worries, man, where he was from. He was a cool dude. I, I go up to the desk, this woman, photo, <laughs> Um, she's like, get to the back of the line. And I said, look, I'm from Australia. We need to get back to LA. You've cancelled our flight. You know, our flight's leaving from LA back to Melbourne in a few hours. She goes, I don't care. I don't care. you got to get in line. I said, look, I spoke to the guy in line. He said I can come up and see you. This is urgent for us. We need to make our connecting flight. And she's like, I don't care. And she's saying all this shit. I don't remember what. And I said, I'm going to report you. I said, fuck you. And then I took her photo, you know, and I was so angry. And um, 
you know, and then I, I stormed off, and then I think uh, we, we missed the, you know, we, we couldn't get uh, from San Fran back to LA, we, we missed that flight. So I called up United, and, um, and told them what happened, and they're like, oh, we'll just, we'll, we'll rebook you on a flight uh, from F San Francisco to Sydney, and Sydney to Melbourne. So for those of you who don't know how it works um, with flying from uh, Australia to America, if you go from Melbourne, it goes from Melbourne to LA. If you go from Sydney, it goes from Sydney to San Francisco. As far as I know. Well, that's how it was back then. I don't know if it's changed. But anyway, so I, I was on the phone for ages. Like, I remember to rebook this flight, it was, oh, it was so much bullshit. Um, I think I was on the phone for like half an hour had this phone up to my ear and I had to call, I think I had to call twice because they did mine and then I had to do my cousin's and my cousin just really wanted to get back to Australia. He was really sort of, um, I don't know, he was not upset. He was just, he gets a bit of anxiety like me sometimes and he just wanted to get back to Australia sort of thing, you know, and, and this big hoo-ha was like, you know, making him go a bit crazy, you know, and I, I was a bit pissed off too. They like fucked everything up. And, um, anyway, so I got the flights rebooked, and, um, we get on this plane, right, and, um, and, and lucky I did this, uh, as I'm leaving the airport, uh, I go into, like, I, I wanted, I remember I wanted Burger King, but the, there was a Burger King there, but they were closed, this is the San Francisco airport, and the only thing open was, like, souvenir shop sort of thing, and I ran in there, and I grabbed a few, you know, San Francisco souvenirs, like, you know, the Alcatraz, the guy on the jail, uh, bars, you know, Alcatraz, you know, grab some shit like that. And, and then I, I looked for snacks and I, and I had some Oreos and I grabbed them and some chips and lucky I did that. I grabbed that shit because I was hungry and I hadn't eaten. I didn't grab it for like any other reason, but I, I mean, in the back of my head, I thought, oh yeah, I have a few snacks on the plane if I need them, you know, sort of thing. But I wasn't grabbing them specifically because I didn't think there'd be anything on the plane. My experience with being on planes is normally there's some snacks, like either some peanuts or pretzels or chips or whatever, right? So I get on the plane and this plane was like so shit. We, and, and our original plane that was going from LA back to Melbourne is a Qantas A380. Uh, it's a really good plane. Uh, it's probably the best fucking plane I've ever been on. I, uh, I went on it once uh, to uh, LA the first time when we were going to um, Colorado. And it was amazing. We had our own power and a power plug, you know, and we could use our laptop and whatever. And the plane just like really just, it was so great. There was not, no turbulence. It just glided and it was just a, a great flight. It's like seriously the best plane I've ever been on. Great service. We had room. It was just, we weren't in first class or anything. This is just coach shit. But it was a lot better than other plane experiences. So we got on this United plane and it was awful. And, and I'm actually, I was telling my cousin this. Um... I'm reminded of the very first time I went on a plane. That's what it felt like because it looked the same. And this was no joke because I remember the first time. You kind of remember that the first time you go on a plane. You know, you're young and shit. You, your parents take you on and it's the first time and you're like, what the fuck's going on? And it sounds funny and, you know, the ee sound and the fucking cabin's all like claustrophobic and people putting shit above their heads. And when you're a kid, you're like, what the fuck's going on here sort of thing. So you sort of remember that. Um, and I remember the first time flying on a plane, it was like the 80s, like sometime in the 80s, and there were no, you know, individual TVs or anything, you had a little radio that you could listen to in your arm um, rest, and there was a TV, but it was in the aisle, like every, like, 10 rows, there was a TV, so, so, in the 80s, this is, it wasn't, um, uncommon to see this, people leaning out of their row to, to look at the TV, because there's one TV every, like I said, every 10 rows or something. Yeah, it was so shit, you know, and and um, I never really saw that again. Like, every other time I've flown on a plane, like, either international or interstate, that you, you now have your own little TV on the back of the chair, or you at least have a radio. You get on this plane, and they had that TV thing every 10 rows, and I sit down, and there's nothing. There's no TV in the back of the chair, and there was no radio. And, like, I know you guys are probably thinking, oh, you know, big deal, you know. I had my laptop, I had my Game Boy, I had all this shit. But in the back of my head, I'm like, hang on, wait, I had a ticket on a Qantas A380. And, yes, 
they were good enough to rebook me on this United plane, but this plane's like garbage, like really shit. And like there were no good services, there was no power, no Wi-Fi, no TV, no radio, none of this crap. It was like the worst flight I've ever been on. Like for, for something in 2012, this felt like a 1980s flight. You know, and I remember there was a time when I, I, I pushed the service button uh, and I said, can I get uh, like a snack? I, I might have even finished my snacks in my bag. I'm not sure. Or I forgot about them. I thought, because normally when you're on a plane, you can get like a little bag of chips or something, you know, and, and you milk it. Like when you've got an international ticket that costs you a few grand, you milk it, you get all the drinks you want and you get all that shit, you know. So I, I, I don't think I even thought about the shit in my bag. I was just like, can I get some uh, chips? You know, some uh, potato chips, you know, and they're like, we don't have that. I'm like, I go, what do you have? And they go, pretzels. I go, oh, look, I don't like pretzels. What else you got? They go, that's all we got. I go, what? I go, this is an international flight. And you don't have any other snack other than pretzels. Are you fucking serious? I didn't say, are you fucking serious? I go, are you serious? That's all you've got? Pretzels? I go, what if someone doesn't like pretzels? Guess what? I don't like pretzels. It's a tough shit. It's that it. I said something like that to them, and they were like, yeah, sorry, that's... that's so I go, whatever, you know. I go, just bring me a Coke or something. And I think I was just drinking soft drink the whole way back. And then I remembered I had the snacks in my bag, and like, it, I had the Oreos and shit, and I ate them. Then, you know, we get back, and, and I remember saying to my cousin, man, I'm so gonna complain, fuck. You know, and normally I do complain. I'm a little complaining. I'm a little complainer. I am, you know, if... If I think service is really bad, like, and, and not just, like, what you get, how you're treated. Like, for example, today, I went into a Burger King today. Sorry, Hungry Jacks, because I'm thinking America. Uh, Hungry Jacks today, and I bought a few cheeseburgers, right? And <laughs> I did, because, <laughs> like, I looked at the menu, and there's a barbecue cheeseburger at the moment for two bucks. And I thought, oh, well, a normal cheeseburger must be two bucks as well. There's not much difference. It's just got barbecue sauce. So I bought two cheeseburgers and a drink, and the drink was a dollar. And it like, comes up seven bucks. And I'm like, I go, no, no, the che cheeseburgers are two bucks. The drink's a dollar. It should be five bucks, right? And she's like, oh, no, no, no. A normal cheeseburger's three dollars. And I'm like, I go, how about this? I go, cancel the two cheeseburgers. Give me two of those barbecue cheeseburgers. Take the onions and the barbecue sauce off. And she goes, what, just the meat and cheese? I go, yeah, that's what a cheeseburger is. And she goes, oh, okay. I think she, she couldn't believe that I, like, I'd worked all this shit out. It's just how I am. I'm like, why the fuck should I just throw away $2 for no fucking reason? It's the same fucking thing. It's, it's a cheeseburger. One's just got barbecue sauce on it. You know, and, and then she's like, you know, and then I had trouble with my card. My card's fucking shit. Uh, and then I finally got it to scan, and, and then it comes up seven bucks on the on the FBOS. And she, and I go, hang on, that says, <laughs> the FBOS screen says seven, six dollars ninety. And the, the uh, Hungry Jack's register says five dollars even. I said, this says seven. And she goes, oh. And then she looks down, she goes, oh yeah, it's cost tax, 63 cents. I go, what? And, and like, like, Right at that moment, I wanted to, like, get mad, and I just, I decided not to get mad. I just decided to go, I go, what are you talking about, 63 cents? That would make $5.63, not $6.90. I go, on top of that, you, the tax is inclusive. You can't then add on tax. I go, this is in America, you know, because you guys do that in America. And she's like, oh, I'll go get my super, like, like, it was a big deal. It's not my fault you fucked up. You know, and like, like, like I said, I wanted to get mad, and I'm off topic, but that's, this is how I am. Like, I have gotten mad in these situations when something hasn't been handled properly. You know, and, and I try and be reasonable. Like, I never abuse um, young people for working at McDonald's. And that's a shit job. That's a hard job. But if you treat me like, uh, whatever, you know, I'll give you an example. Like, I, I've gone off at um, people in supermarkets before, like women, and, and when they just they talk like you get you get they're supposed to like because I'm in customer service right they're supposed to serve you they're supposed to say hey how's it going uh, hey how's your day been you know all the usual bullshit they scan all the registers and they're supposed to say you got flybys uh, you want cash out and da, da, da. I hate it when I get there and they say how's it going 
And then they engage, they turn to their left and engage in a conversation with someone and just ignore you. And they're like, beep, 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 beep. Yeah, you know, uh, on Saturday shift, I'm rostered on Saturday. And they just fucking ignore you. And then they go, I'll oh, catch out. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, I think I said it's fine and I'm on Saturday. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it's 50 bucks. And then, 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 I, I hate that shit. Like, and I've told people off for a while. I've gone, Wow, a really good customer service. I go, you couldn't fucking wait a minute before having your conversation about Saturday shift? I go, is that how you're really going to serve people in your store? You go, oh, you know, you know, so I, I've, I've done that before and I'm not afraid to like tell people off and shit. So, you know, um, oh, I'm just trying to get back on track now. Um. Yeah, so I wanted to complain, you know, I, I wanted to complain about United when I got back. Um, they, they lost the bag and the flight was shit and, and that woman was so like fucking, she was really rude and aggressive back in San Francisco and I'm like, I'm going to fucking complain. But like by the time I had to wait a day for my bag and I was happy that I got my bag back, it had that Mortal Kombat stick in it, the classic one, um, like literally I, I had enough room to fit that in my, it took up half my bag. You know, and um, I got it back, and it looked like it was going to be lost because it took a day for them to find my fucking bag. How, how does it take a day to find my fucking bag? It, it went on the plane. It went on the United fucking plane, and and they sent it somewhere else. You know, and oh yeah, I was so going to complain, and then I just got lazy. And I'm like, I can't be fucked. You know, because like thinking about it. I remember when I rebooked the flights and it was like half an hour to talk to someone and all this shit and I'm, I'm thinking, oh God, I'm going to have to go through that again. And I hate being on the phone for a long time. I really do. And so I never complained about it. And then, you know, I saw all this shit today happen and I was like, you know, fuck, you know, United, mate, they're so shit. And this, this, um, the CEO of United comes out and he says, oh, we regret what happened today. You know, uh, when we have to reaccommodate our passengers. You call that reaccommodating your passengers? Smash the guy in the face and drag him off the plane because he refuses to go. After he paid for his ticket. That is just shit. They fucked up. They shouldn't have overbooked the flight. It's on them. Not this guy. Not any of those people. And that's why no one volunteered. Why should they have to get off the plane? Because you fucked up and you want to send your staff somewhere that they could fucking drive to four hours away? Anyway, I wanted to do the video. I, I had to I had to get it out. Because like honestly, like this that made me mad. It really did. I watched I watched so many YouTube videos about it. I, I, um, you know, and it's gonna get really bad for you, uh, United over the next few days. And I'm fucking glad. You know, and if any of you like I said, if any of you guys are American don't ever fly United. Don't do it. Worst fucking airline. Like I said, worst experience I've had. What happened to me is nothing what happened to this guy. But but even what happened to me, you know, I paid a lot of money for my ticket. You know, and sure, I, I was, you know, reaccommodated on a new flight and I got home. But like, that plane, like, oh, from the 80s, man. It was so bad. I was, oh. So fucking bad, you know, um, just so shit. My cousin um, has flown a whole lot more than me in the States, and he's always told me, like, I was on this flight once and we had Wi-Fi, it was so cool, I was, like, texting people. It's like rubbing it in because I've never had Wi-Fi on a plane, you know, and I'm like, fuck you, man. You know, and, and he's been on, like, so many planes, you know, because um, we're both, we both grew up in computers and stuff, you know, so we're both, like, geeks like that. And yeah, so he's telling me about how he had free Wi-Fi on this. Anyway, he told me, he said, this is the worst fucking plane I've been on. Like he, he, like, he couldn't believe it. He said, this United flight was so bad. He said, I'm never flying them again. In 2012, he said that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm never flying them again either. You know, I was, yeah, really mad about it. So I just wanted to do a video about it. I wanted to just um, talk about it because, you know, I hope, you know, I hope United see this and I hope um, that you guys... Don't ever use them. Use, use other... I don't know. I, use anyone but them. <laughs> because they're shit. They're really shit. And they don't care about the people or their customers. And, uh, you know, they don't deserve to profit from that. They deserve to go bankrupt. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to enjoy the next week uh, of seeing, I'm sure, more videos come out. And more people talk trash about this airline. And watch them go into damage control. And I hope... 
it just keeps going on. I hope it just keeps going on and on and on. You know, um, I, something I want to add too is they, they put out, they said the guy was disruptive and all this shit, you know, and, um, you know, uh, he wasn't. He only became disruptive when he said, I'm not, I'm not getting off the plane. I'm not. I've got to be in wherever it was, you know, uh, tomorrow morning. I've got uh, patience because I'm a doctor. That's when he became disruptive. That's them saying he was disruptive the whole time. He was one of the first to, to say, yeah, I'll get off. But um, then when he realized the flight was later, he couldn't get back in time. He's like, nah, actually, I have to stay, you know. He was one of the only ones who actually volunteered. And they fucking did that to him in the end. That's bullshit, dude. That is just... That is bullshit, man. You know, and this big company needs a boot up their ass. They need to be taught a fucking lesson. So I hope, like I said, I hope people really can reconsider flying United. You know, because they're a god-awful airline. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this was my two cents on it. And I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace.